Chance Large here with another fix it video for you and on the bench today we have another microphone tech cub monitor and this has been sent to me by uh, uh, somebody who watched a previous video that I did um, more than happy to help out um, this has uh, been checked out physically um, there was some bits of plastic broken on the inside because these plastic cases are just not as good as the original metal ones and that's been repaired but the guy that sent it to me is not electronically minded so uh, he sent it to me to do basically a recapping of uh, the bits and pieces in here in the electronics and also to uh, fit a mains lead because whoever um, sold this on took the mains lead out so we're going to put a new mains lead in there we've got the standard TTL input uh, and we can test that with uh, both a uh, pattern generator and also I've got a, a computer which we can plug into there as well. So let's just have a little look on the inside. Let's take the the old covers off. Now with I've never had one of these before. Let me just explain. I've never had one of the plastic ones before. I've done quite a few of the, the metal case ones. So this is the first plastic one. And we've got one, two, um, two screws there. And there should be two screws at the bottom, but there's only just the one. And there's two screws in the side of the cabinet as well. So let's uh, get these screws out first. So we'll replace that missing one later on. This screw up the top here honestly doesn't look... The same as the others, it's a slightly different screw type. Okay, put the screen face down on this one. It's a 1451 DS4 is the model number of it. So that case has come off quite nicely. There's a trip over it. Now, good thing about this one, um, on this particular model, is that we can get it all the circuit board and probably do all the replacement capacitors without having to take the board out like we do with the metal ones. So this is actually going to hopefully be a lot easier. Now, the mains cable would come into that grommet and then up to the power switch which is here and basically that's just been chopped the live side has been chopped the the negative side unfortunately whoever chopped this out let's get this camera in to show you so what's happened is they've just cut the cable for the positive side but on the neutral side um, it looks like they've yeah, I've actually broken the tag off, so that means I've got to replace the whole switch. Oh well, it's one of those things, I suppose. So, that's uh, one little job to do. Now, there's no burn marks or scorch marks on the circuit board. There's a few bits and pieces here which have got hot, um, I think. But the main components... inside they all look okay there's no capacitors i can just see initially that are swelling up no capacitors and so on there are some issues with some of the presets on here you can see they've got like a furring on them like that now that's Probably just leftover condensation mould. I, I don't think that's going to affect the actual operation. I think probably we can just brush that off, clean that off, and they should be okay. There's also the one in the power supply as well. There, that's for adjusting the main HT rail there. That's also got it on there as well. So I'm, I would hope that that is just... Uh, 
quite literally where condensation where this has been stored condensation has got into there and has it been attracted to that particular type of plastic and has just stuck on there I don't know uh, I'm not a chemist or whatever I can't judge on that but uh, that appears to be what the problem is on those so we will clean those up and we will re replace the main capacitors um, one that causes a lot of problems is this one here it's a thousand microfarad that's on the lower HT rail for the frame output stage that one quite often fails um, takes a resistor with it down there um, the main 100 mic smoothing capacitor that looks okay I might just take that out and check it but the other power supply capacitors down there we can replace all those as we work through. I'm not going to replace everything because there's only a few that actually on the main supply rails really that need replacing um, because of uh, time uh, and so on. But I can't see any others which are actually looking bad. Right, so I shall get this uh, in a bit better position where I can clean those pots up and uh, carry on. Okay, well I'm just going to start with um, giving these resistors a clean off with a toothbrush and dragging it out. Yeah, they just seem to have cleaned up quite nicely. Give that a brush with a bigger... I've just pulled the uh, CRT base um, board off of here just so I can get at these pots a lot easier. There's also um, a pot on the baseboard there, which is the uh, A1 control. You can see that's also got um, some mould on it. But um, these other smaller ones, only some of them have been affected. Weird. I've never come across that before. I can only, consume, uh, only assume that it's some form of residue from dampness I don't know but I don't think it's necessary to replace them I think I'm just going to chance that they're going to be okay as they are because it doesn't appear to have affected any other components on the board there's no mold on the board I'll just get some aero duster on there as well. Let's just brush the stuff off the bench. We don't want to get, send that flying everywhere, do we? But we will give the board a bit of a blow off. With the aero duster. Okay. The CRT seems to be okay. There's no damage to the CRT base. So we'll put that back on there. Make sure that's nicely pushed home. And then we'll just do the same cleaning for this HT pot in here. Quite get out with that brush. So all looks fairly clear and clean so let's just also have a look around the EHT tripler that all looks quite good focus control looks okay yeah the line output transformer looks to be okay oh there's another pot in there look so it's got some residue on it now 
you should be able to see in there if I just okay so everything looks good let's have a little look at the EHT cap that should just pull off yeah now I always check around the EHT cap for signs of uh, arcing it's usually you see little pits on there if it's been arcing and it doesn't appear to be but I think we're okay with that just push it in and close it down right fuses look to be intact oh another pop down there just realized there's another pop down here it's also got to be cleaned quick blow out with that air that okay right so next stop is to gather the components that we're going to need to do this and uh, I've got a list of I've got a website that I go to that uh, I've used quite a few times in the past um, as sort of a reference for somebody that's done this sort of quite a few times it's difficult to remember every time unless you make a, a, a list and I've only done it a few times so um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll put a, a link in the in the um, introduction uh, to this website where um, those components are the normal list of components I don't change all of them um, because not all of them are absolutely needed on every model um, but uh, you'll see that in the list so I'm going to call that up and build my list up right I've drawn up my list of uh, components that I want to change for sure um, there are some others in the list in that website that could be changed um, if you really want to go ahead and change all, all the electronics but basically the ones I'm going to be changing are the ones A I know do fail and that's particularly this one here the sales and mic and the frame time base the three capacitors in the other part of the output side of the circuit and main smoothing block and uh, a couple of small capacitors in the main power supply so they're all uh, sitting next to components uh, that are getting hot and uh, as they dry out they will lose their electrolyte and that can cause them to fail so Basically, any of the electrolytic capacitors that are sitting near something hot um, is really the ones that I want to change. Once I've done that, I can then test it, and if I find other faults, then I can change other components. But the smaller electrolytics near stuff that's just operating, chances are they're probably going to be okay. I mean, you know, if, if you want to change all the capacitors in it, it's up to you. But I don't. I change the ones that I know need changing, and then fault find from then on if necessary I've got to replace the main switch so I've got to dig out one of those and also feed the power cable through so I'm just going to get all the bits and pieces together now I've got the list together get all the components together and then we'll start work on that okay got all the components together um, got my list let's get to changing these capacitors over Okay, so all the capacitors have now been changed. There's only one other component I sometimes change, but it depends on how it's working. Uh, but I'll check that later on. That's the 12 volt regulator. Um, sometimes it overheats, sometimes it doesn't. If it's working, I tend to leave it alone because it's okay. Um, now, the next thing we've got to do is change this power switch, uh, which sadly, because whoever chopped the mains lead out, goodness knows what reason they chopped the mains lead out, Possibly to make it safe before they can sell it on. Who knows? Anyway, what they've done is they've broken the tab off, so I've got to get this switch off. There we have the um, switch, and you can see this tag at the back of the switch there has been snapped off. So basically, what I'm going to do is just pull this sh uh, shielding back off of here and snip the internal wires. I can. There's enough leeway there for me to worry about not having to try and desolder it it's easy enough to just snip it off like so 
And now we've got two clips, which are a couple of screwdrivers either side should be able to push them in. Like so, and I should now be able to push the switch out of the front. So one side's going, the other side doesn't go, so let's push it out. That's basically the switch there with that tag that's been broken off. It's a shame I can't get enough of that to rewire it, but it, I don't know. But um, it's a nice looking switch and it, it might well have illumination. If we open the switch itself, we get a little fine watchmaker screwdriver in there and just lever the actual switch bit itself out. The one side's coming out and the other side's not. Ah, there we are. I'm getting both of them out. Now just be careful because there's a spring in there. It's an illuminated switch, which it is. It's got a little lamp in there as well. Now, I haven't got one of these, I don't think, but I've got some similar switches. I'm going to have a look and see if I could possibly replace just that tag that uh, leg of that switch because it would be nice to actually put that back as it was so just remembering that the wire side here was on the output so that's the output side that's the one that's got the the bulb in it let me see what i can find with regards to a replacement switch I think I'm going to have to obtain a proper switch for this because this, I can't fix that one. It's a shame because you know, sometimes switches can be fixed. You can do it. You can take them apart and replace bits and pieces. But in this instance, it's not. I haven't got a switch that will replace that. I'm going to have to see if I can get one. In the meantime, what we can do is we can connect a mains lead to this take those off using a chocolate block connector so we've got a replacement mains lead we don't need the plug on the end of this so i'm going to cut it off but i'm not going to cut it off hard down there you never know sometimes you can have a need to replace that i probably won't ever but rather than waste it for the sake of two inches of rubber put that back in my junk box <laughs> you never know i hate throwing things away tear off the ends and join it together on there now i'm guessing that the mains when they took the mains lead out there's no earth tag there oh hang on yes there's an earth tag here and they've just basically yanked that out of, out of there and I get a bit of screwdriver in there and do that the big wires God, and they're a bit rock solid there we are So yeah, so there's the earth tag that they shot. Why would they why would they do that? I can only think that they've done this to uh, disposed of it in a safe manner. Whereas if I was getting rid of something that had electrical socket on, you didn't want anyone to kill themselves by plugging it in and switching it on, you'd do the same thing, wouldn't you? Right, can that... No, I have to put another one on. Right. So we can pop that clamp out of there as well. I'll put that in later. So 
screw that in. There's a, a cable tie there. Put the overhead camera so you can see what I'm doing there. So feeding in the mains cable. There's a cable tie there that's a bit loose, so it probably had the mains cable through it originally. There's no sheath floating about. So I'll take that down to there. I need a little bit more flex cut back. People say to me, why do you cut your cables back like that and then um, peel it back? And the reason is that using a cable snipper around the outside to try and take the outer sheath off, you, nine times out of ten, because of my clumsiness, I cut through one of the cables. So this is just the safest way for me to remove the outer sheath, because I know exactly what I'm cutting through. I use a, a wire stripper to take the ends off. I can be a bit more accurate with that on a single core. Let that bit rubber go. There it goes. Okay. So there's my good old CK wire stripper. So I'll just adjust that. Got little markers on the end there to adjust it to the right depth. So. One, two, three, four. When I use these, what I like to do is put the cutter in, cut it, and then push with my thumb away. It's just my preferred method. Twist the wires in the way that they were twisted in the factory. Right. Let's find a Earth tag and that goes through that nut, that hole, yep. Yeah. And then we just pop that earth onto there. Crimp it up with the big pliers. No, it's not good enough. That's a good amount of earth. Right. So I'm not going to put solder onto these. Yeah, I'm just going to put them into a chocolate block connector. This will allow us to test the work we've done to see if the actual monitor comes to life. The worst case scenario is if replacing these components, we don't get a working monitor. Say the lot is gone or the triple is gone. Although the triplets you can get replacements now, I believe. Worst case scenario would be that I have to take all the bits out that I put in and give it back to the owner in an unrepaired state. So rather than waste time waiting for a potential switch let's test it before we go any further if this works we know we can get a replacement switch we'll take measurements of the hole we may even be able to get a illuminated rocker so nice and tight on those put the two earth tags together put the bolt through oh, hang on one's come off there we go onto the board washer, blocking washer, 
nut. Push that out of the way for now. Screwdriver. And tight. Okay, we are nearly ready for trial run number one. Flashbang, smoke, and run like hell. Okay, before we do any more, let's just triple check everything's in where it should be. I haven't put capacitors around the wrong way. Everything looks good. There's no wires hanging off. There's nothing shorting and touching that shouldn't be. We should now be rewarded with a proper full screen picture. Power on. Yes. That looks good. Phewee. Now on the camera I can see his lines rolling across because the frame rate is different. So let's plug in our test signal. Uh, it should be standard TTL input from my test signal generator. I'll turn on. And we have color bars. Yay! Ah, success. Whew. Let's just put the grating on for a minute and see what the height is right. So frame height, because we did tweak that little pop a little bit. Yeah, so let's bring it to about there. So the two lines are just about scanning right. The whole thing looks pretty square, although east-west correction could do with tweaking. Do, 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 do. Um, east-west adjustment pot is a long way down there, and it's close to where I don't want to put my fingers. Hmm. How did I do this last time? I had a very long screwdriver. I put down there. I've got a, my insulated tweaker. I think what I did is I just taped it to a longer screwdriver because I haven't got one with a long flat thin end. So Probably do it from the other side of the board, but yeah, so I'm adjusting the east west. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then horizontal shift, which is line phase. Well, that's good to me. That looks pretty damn good. I'm quite pleased with that. Plain raster. Bit of red only. Quite, quite nice. There's no coloured patches. Green, blue, white, and colour bars. I'm quite happy with that. So think we are all but done we just got to get a replacement for this switch which I'll need to measure up send off and put that in so I'm going to wrap it up wrap this video up on this point uh, I'm going to get one of those switches or a replacement switch I can fit that in that's going to be dead easy all I've got to do is put that in take that chocolate box out wire the switch in and we're done
I think we'll be fine. Right, so here we are back with this uh, cub monitor and the last part of the repair is to replace this faulty uh, power switch, uh, which uh, it certainly wasn't faulty actually, it was okay, but the uh, terminal was broken off by whoever cut the mains cable out. And I managed to get some uh, replacement switches on double pole uh, single throw, so uh, we can switch both live and neutral and it's illuminated as well. Um, the only thing is I couldn't get a green one. There, there was a green one in there, but because the um, switch itself looks pretty much identical in terms of physical size, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this switch apart. I've got several, so even if I break this one, I know I can use one of the others. So I'd rather give the customer back uh, a green switch, uh, which is what he had when he bought it. So uh, it would be nice to, to, um, to give him back the right, you know, as he bought it. So uh, what we'll do, uh, we'll just get the camera on close up so you can see what I'm doing about this switch. What we're doing is we're going to take this uh, switch out. I did show earlier on how to do this. Basically, it's a rocker. It's held in by two little clips on the side. So if you just get two small screwdrivers you may you may be able to do it with just one just like a watchmaker screwdriver push it in and then just gently lever it up um, but quite often you need to have another one in there holding it up otherwise it pops back into place and then you do the same on the other side you can see this one's been done already when I took it apart earlier and this is the tough bit because it's now expanded so you should be able to just get that screwdriver in there there it is and you should be able to just gently lever the whole rocker part out so there's the little tags you just got to be careful not to break those so that's that switch has had it so now we've got to do the same on this one this is a new one so let's just see if we can do that in that tree on this one we might be able to just hold it yeah we can so just very gently remembering that we are with the on this side this is the output side that's got the wires that's got the uh, neon lamp over it and so the one goes on this side so we take that gently out of there and then we have a look and see if the rocker mechanism of the plastic is the same well it's not exactly the same but it's not that different why don't we see if it will work so remembering that it was like that so to turn on it's got to be like that let's just see if it will fit and work push it down a little bit further because of course it may it may not even fit and work so no it doesn't now I suspect that's because the molding of the plastic part of the rocker is different because this one's got a lot of plastic around there but the actual bit that flips is still there although it's just very slightly different so what I'm going to do because this switch is knackered anyway I can't do anything with it I'm just going to trim this little bit of excess sorry if that went off camera I'm just going to trim this little bit of excess around here nipping it with the cutters right so on over that side of course it's it's a it's a green switch but the light inside is red that yeah i could take that i could take that lamp out of there and put it in there if necessary but the fact that it lights up i think would be okay um so it was that way wasn't it 
we need to put that in that way. Okay, that's clipped in that side. But it's not clipping in that side. Oh, there it is. It's clipped in. Yeah. And then when it's pushed into the chassis. So the next thing we've just got to double check and make sure that it actually does what it's supposed to do. Let's quickly get my test meter on continuity mode. So that one to that one. And off. Yep. And off. And on. We're done. Right. Now what we've got to do on here is get the mains cable out through the front of there and that one as well out through the front. So we're going to have to undo this nut. I have to pull the wires through the front to get them to solder onto these connections. So let's connect this to the output side of things. We ought to have some shielding on here. That's heat shrink. Will that go over? Yeah, that will go over there as well. So. Black for neutral. Let's do color coding. Let's use red for live. Red and black. Good old UK mains wiring colors. <laughs> Red for live, black for neutral. But the EU got involved and changed them to brown and blue. Something to do with colorblind engineers, I, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Comment away if you know better. one part of the switch done. Let's get this a little bit more through here. I've been doing all this and wandered out of camera shot, sorry. Strand. Right. Let's apply some solder. Clean the bit. Not too much. And similarly on the live. Just enough to let it flow. been over cautious with the live hasn't really flowed properly to make a good solder joint there we go that's better right 
And whilst we've got it in that state, let's just double check that switch still works. Test my beep out. Okay. Let's now put some extra heat on this just to cover up the Heat shrink to shrink. Put the extra flex there. From the fold, try to get rid of. <sighs> and a bit flatter, and that should go over. Come on, heat shrink. Probably use a, a tube size that's a touch too small. No, there we are, that has gone over. Same with that one. Ah, the actual blade of the switch connector. A little bit on the wider side for that. The output so I'm just going to put my screwdriver and uh, my pliers into this heat shrink and just tease it open a little bit I'm have to get it started there we go right so that's that done Use the old heat gun to shrink it. I must admit, seeing other people who do it with a, a naked flame from a lighter scares me. But I'm not a smoker, so I don't have one. Or well, I've got one somewhere for lighting the barbecue or something, but. If you've got a heat gun, why not use that? lighter is cheaper okay dokie so whilst we've got the set in this condition before we put it back test 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 so we are in the is that the on or the off position I can't remember so that's the output so that should be on that should be off That should be off. Power on. TV's not come on. That's lit up. We know it works, so I'm going to fit that switch into the socket.
So this switch hopefully measured the right size for the hole and it should just push in and clip into place. There we go. Brilliant. Washer. Lock washer. Nut. Pliers. Heavy screwdriver. Nice and tight. There's the clamp marks where I clamp this in. So that's what I'm going to do, put it back in the same place. And it should just push in. There we go. That cable's nice and tight. That plugs back into position. Switch on. Power on. We've got a red light in a green switch. And a monitor which is working. Oh well, I suppose if I'd have changed the neon in there, that would have made it a green. So it was a, all a bit of a waste of time really. Just didn't think about changing the neon over. But Anyway, the switch is repaired, replaced rather, the set is repaired. I went through the whole uh, manufacturer's alignment process, setting up the black levels and so on. So I can just show you. What that looks like on a test. Signal. We're on color bars. So there we have a nice picture with a black black. The background levels needed changing because that background, when you turn the con contrast down, it was actually green. So you have to go through the manufacturer's settings with a meter, checking the um, grid voltages of the, uh, each of the guns on the tube and set them up to get a nice black background and the contrast should be just off so you can adjust that with the brightness level well that is it it is now working as it should so there we are thanks very much for watching hope you've enjoyed the video like and subscribe to the channel if you like it and i'll see you on the next video cheerio